last Easter? We celebrated only a month into the pandemic and lockdown. We've learned a lot since then over this past year, but there is a lot yet to learn. Today I want to ask you three questions as we get started. I was challenged by these questions at a conference that I went to. Have you sat down and thought about what the pandemic has taken away from you? I think it's good to pray and grieve through the things that you're missing, to identify some of the things that are that causing stress in your life. You also ask, what has the pandemic not taken away? When I was asked these questions, I realized there's a number of things that I stopped doing that really weren't couldn't be blamed on the pandemic. It was just my response to the pandemic. And I took things out of my life that I really need, and I've been seeking to put them back. And then this last question may be the most interesting. What has the pandemic given you? What insights have you learned about God, about yourself, and about your loved ones? There's a lot of things to consider there. But I'm excited that this Easter, we're going to be worshiping at the park. We are worshiping in our sanctuary. And I want you to know that we're recording this message on Thursday night, so it's ready to be uploaded for Easter Sunday. And it's really a combination of the message that we're planning for the park, as well as the message that will be part of our service in the sanctuary. My goal is to consider the different appearances of Jesus after his resurrection. And then I want to look at each person he appeared to or group of people and think about what their last memory of Jesus would have been if Jesus hadn't risen from the dead. I want to ask the question for each person, what if their story had ended there? And just ponder that. We're thankful we know the end of the story, but it's just good to consider that. With just two exceptions, each of the characters we considered saw Jesus the very first day that he had risen from the dead. My proposition this morning is no matter what our story has been, Jesus desires to bless us with the power of his resurrection. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your care and your love, for the truth of the, the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, your son, for your willingness to send him to watch him be crushed by you because of our sins, but knowing that he would uh, declare it is finished, and after three days he would rise from the dead to show us that he had power over sin and death. Bless us as we consider these Bible characters. Bless us as we consider just what Easter should mean to us. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The first appearance of Jesus was to Mary Magdalene. And we need to remember, Jesus honored women throughout his ministry, and they were faithful in supporting his ministry. We know that after traveling back and forth from the tomb, having told the disciples that the body was gone, she went back to the tomb, and she was weeping. And Jesus appeared to her in John 20, 15, 16, says, Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Prior to this resurrection appearance to Mary, Mary was one of the last people to see Jesus' body. We see that in the Gospel of Matthew 27, that Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb. And Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. She was there. She was there the longest. But I ask you, what if her story ended there? She'd be considered a faithful follower of Jesus because she maintained her commitment right up to the end. But she would not know of Jesus' power over her sin and over death. In addition to Mary, there were women. There were women that were with her. Mary was not alone that morning. Um, they went back and forth, I think, a little bit. But at one point, Mary got away by themselves, and that's when Jesus appeared to her. But we also know from Matthew's Gospel, it says, Behold, Jesus met these women and said, Greetings. And they, they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. 
Now it's good that there are other women that saw Jesus because when Mary went back to tell the men that Jesus had been seen by her, they refused to believe it. So this gave Mary company while the men were catching up with the truth of what had truly happened. It's unfortunate the men didn't believe her because, as I said, these women were faithful. These women were faithfully with Jesus. Again, not just Mary, but in Luke verse 23 through 55, it says, The women who had come with him from Galilee, they had known Jesus from there, they followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. And again, like Mary, I ask, what if their story ended there, outside a tomb with a dead body in it? Not a resurrected body, not an empty tomb, but one that had an occupant. If their story had ended there, they would not know the power of Jesus over sin and death. Then the first man to be appeared, uh, to receive an appearance of Jesus was Peter. And he needed it because of the troubles he had had in his life. Um, Luke 24, 34, when, when they were talking about Jesus, they, they said to two disciples, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. We also know that that is quoted in 1 Corinthians 15, that he specifically appeared to Peter. Now if you remember, Peter's last memory before the resurrection of Jesus would have been Jesus looking at him after he denied him. The Gospel of Luke, verse 22, it says, The Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. What if Peter's story had ended there? A failure, a bitter, broken man who bragged much about how much he would follow Jesus. But then when the time came, he denied him. Thankfully, Jesus appeared to Peter and showed him his power. I want to take a moment and talk about John. Even though there wasn't a specific appearance of John, I think it's important to note this is the disciple whom Jesus loved. And it says that um, the other disciple, in John 20, verse 8, the other disciple whom he reached the tomb first. That's John. He's referring to himself. He never called himself by name. He also went in the tomb and he saw and believed. John didn't need to see the resurrected body to believe. He saw the evidence. He saw if they would have stolen the body, they wouldn't have taken and done, done to the clothes that what was done. They were just kind of empty. And then they, they around his head, that, that was folded. They wouldn't have done that. So he knew something had happened. And and began to form his belief in the resurrection and the power of Jesus. Remember, prior to this resurrection appearance to John, his memory would have been at the cross. He was the only disciple that stayed with him that long. And we know in John 19, 26 through 27, it says, Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby. He said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. What if his story had ended there? He'd be considered a faithful disciple. He'd be considered the one who lovingly took responsibility for Mary, the mother of Jesus. But he would not have known the power that Jesus had over sin and death. There's a number of things that can be said about the disciples of Jesus. There are two, I don't have a slide for it, but there were two that uh, were on the road to Emmaus, to Emmaus, and they Jesus met them and they didn't recognize him, and not till they stopped off and, and they were eating bread, eating together. And when he was at the table in Luke 24, it says, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. Now this was an exciting visit because they ran back to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples. But uh, we also know that of those... There was another visitation of Jesus to the ten disciples, the ten Judas having died and Thomas not being with them that evening. And in John 20, verse 19, it says, On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors became being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. What was their last memory of Jesus, all of the disciples? Matthew 26, 56 says, But all this has taken place 
that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. And it says, then all the disciples left him and fled. Remember, Peter tried to fight when they were going to arrest him, and Jesus said no. And he said, this has to fulfill the scriptures, what you're doing to me. And when they heard that and realized there was no fight, they, they all fled. They all just abandoned him. What if their story had ended there? A bunch of cowards deserting their rabbi that they sent, that they believed in. But it didn't end there. They had the chance to see the resurrected Savior. Before we talk about Thomas, I want to say one brief thought about James, the brother of Jesus. There are two individuals that I'm going to close with, James being the first. He was the half-brother of Jesus. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 7, it says, Jesus appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Now, wait a minute. He had appeared to the disciples, the apostles. There were more, there were 12 disciples, but there were over 70 apostles. Remember when Jesus sent out the 70? They could be considered the sent ones, and that's what apostles mean. So before he appeared to all of those, and then the larger groups that we know about in the scriptures, he took time to appear to his half-brother James. We don't know when that happened, but we know that it did happen. And I think this is such a testament of Jesus' love. James was not even there with Mary at the cross. We don't even know where he was. But we do know from the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 5, that it said, for not even his brothers believed in him. Jesus is so patient. But I ask, what if James' story had ended there? Jude was also a brother of Jesus. I think Simon and there's one other. They would be known as the faithless family. They didn't trust the miracles of their, of their half-brother. They would be remembered as those that deserted their mother and their brother. Well, this morning in the church service, I'm, I, I want to really talk about the Thomas. I want to talk about his story because I think it has the most, me, the greatest message of hope for us. But before I talk a little bit about that, let's hear what Thomas has to say from his own words. It's hard to be judged for one mistake, but it's what I'll be remembered for, I guess. I wasn't always the doubter. That's not who I am. I have a zeal for Jesus. I always have. When Lazarus died, no one wanted to return to Bethany with Jesus. The atmosphere there was volatile and dangerous. Jesus said he'd show us his glory. I assumed we'd all die there. Still, I'm the one who said, let's go. But then, then came this room. That night. At the time, none of us understood as we sat at that table. This is my body? This is my blood? He raised the dead. He, he cast out demons even. What could he possibly mean? I didn't doubt it when they told me he was dead. But how can you not doubt someone coming back to life? Some didn't doubt, but for me, it was harder. Maybe it was just that I didn't want to be disappointed. Many came after me who believed without seeing what I saw. Jesus called them blessed. Yes, I touched the place of the nails, the hole in his side, such definitive proof that I cried out, my Lord, my God. But that wasn't the only amazing thing. 
the Almighty One, He came back for me. He didn't want to leave me behind in my doubt. He says, I'm worth that. And I'll follow Him anywhere for the rest of my life. Jesus' appearance to Thomas would be eight days after the rest of the disciples saw Jesus. But in those eight days, the disciples sought him out and they sought to tell him. John 20, verse 25 says, We have seen the Lord, but he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Those are strong words. Those are determined words. Whatever was causing him to say, I'm not going to believe. What if Thomas' story had ended there? Peter was known, would be known as the bitter one. The others, would, some would be known as faithful. He would be known as faithless and stubborn. His determination. Because other people were claiming that he was risen. Thankfully, it did not end there. As I said, two, eight days after the other ten disciples saw Jesus... Chapter 20 of John, verse 26 through 29 says, Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I love this story as well. Because Jesus truly loves those that saw him and could take the message of his resurrection. He loved them. But we learn from this story, from these verses, that Jesus truly wants to bless those who have not seen him and yet believe in him. That's a promise of great blessing if we are willing to believe. My conclusion is, no matter our past, Jesus desires to bless all who believe. We need to believe that. No matter where you are in your relationship or your lack of relationship with Jesus, you can find the blessing of salvation, forgiveness, and peace by trusting in Him. Let's consider the things we heard from Thomas. He said he had a zeal for Jesus. He said he was willing to die with Jesus. That's from John eleven sixteen. When they were going to go raise Lazarus from the dead. That was too close to Jerusalem and it was too dangerous. And the disciples said, no, they want to kill you there. And Thomas actually said, let us also go that we may die with him. That sounds good. A willingness to die, a zeal. But then when he's confronted with Jesus' death. And he's told that he's risen from the dead. He said he would never believe without seeing. But thankfully... Jesus appeared to Thomas, and Thomas surrendered to Jesus as his Lord and God. I ask you, where does your story end? What was the last thing that you have thought about in relation to the Savior of the world? Don't let your story end apart from a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't trust your zeal and your willingness to try things to find a way that makes sense to you. Don't despair because you struggle with faith. Jesus understands that struggle. Just like Thomas, we all need to surrender to Jesus as our Lord and our God. Surrender to Jesus as your Lord and your God. He is the only Savior and the one who has sent His Spirit to convict us of our sin, to draw us to Him, because he is the only perfect sacrifice for sin. And because he rose from the dead, you can be sure that he will hear your prayer, your heart's cry to him, that you would be forgiven of your sin and be accepted into God's family. I want to close in prayer. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the Easter message. We've heard it. We've heard it in many ways. It has been a blessing for me just to look and think about all these people and what their life would have been like 
if Jesus hadn't risen from the dead and appeared to them? What would our lives be like if you hadn't risen from the dead? What would this world be like? We thank you, Jesus, that you were willing to follow through on the full plan, the plan from eternity past, to reach out to a fallen creation by dying for our sins on the cross. We know the difficulties of the cross. We know the spiritual, physical, and just even the social, relational difficulties. Everybody deserted you, even your Father, for so forsake you. For we thank you, Father, that, that you had to plan to bring him back to life. We thank you, Jesus, that you predicted it. There's so many reasons that we can believe in that resurrection. I pray that that truth would carry us on into the days ahead. Whatever faces us, whatever we face in, in the world that we live in now, with the pandemic and how that's going to wrap up or not wrap up, we know that you know and that we can trust you. Don't let our story end in any way apart from you. Let us walk daily and follow you. And now, Lord, we say, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead.